نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد تبدي القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبسار وديائها وعلى آله وصحبه دائما أبدا صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله Today of course is the 13th of the Hajj Eid had passed Tuesday Day of Sacrifice ended yesterday uh, at Maghrib uh, and the days of uh, Tashriq or the days of the uh, uh, Takbir will end today at Asr so after Asr, after Juma again we will do the Takbir and after Asr we will also do the takbir, inshallah. We've been, we had been talking about the Hajj uh, until this point, and many things happened after the Hajj. Uh, you know, the martyrdom of Umar, Radhima, occurred in this month, as well as the martyrdom of Uthman, radiallahu anhu. So both of them were martyred in this month of Zil Hajj. And so if we look at, you know, Umar radiya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it said that there is a door, and slow, so long as that door remains closed, then no fitna will enter this ummah. None of these issues will enter this, this ummah. And so the Sahaba Ikram, they asked, they said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Will that door be broken or will that door be open? And Rasulullah said that that door will be broken. So they understood what this meant. That whoever that door is, because they understood that this door, you know, is not a physical door. Rasulullah is talking about somebody holding things back. So they also understood that whoever that door is will not die but he will be martyred. They understood who that door was when Umar Radiyam was martyred. Ali Radiyam of course understood this even before. Because he had said to Umar Radiyam during when, when the campaigns were being sent to uh, Iraq, Umar Radio wanted to go and head the campaign. And Ali Radio said to him that if something happens to you, then who will, who will safeguard this religion? Who will keep things in balance? And so he kept Umar Radio from leaving. The, when Omar Radio, what happened was that when all of these lands were being conquered and when Persia was conquered, so he had a lot of captives coming in, you know, prisoners of war. And there was one named Abu Lulu, Feroz Abu Lulu, who was one of the captives in the campaigns of Persia. And he was a very good blacksmith. His master was 
Mughira bin Sha'bah and Mughira would have him do a lot of work and he felt that the compensation for the work Abu Lulu felt that the compensation for the work was inadequate and so he came and complained to Umar and he said to him he said that you know that my master he doesn't treat me well he doesn't compensate me for my efforts as he should. So he asked him, what do you do? So he said, I'm a blacksmith. And he said, how much does he compensate you? And he told him. And Umar to him said that this sounds like a fair wage. And then he gave, told him about the rights of the master. So to Abu Lulu, he tells him about the rights of the master. Abu Lulu, in his mind, you know, he's not Muslim, he's Parsi, he's fire worshiper. So in his mind, he thinks that Omar Radio is not going to go and talk to Mughira. However, Omar Radio goes and he talks to Mughira. And he tells him, he says, treat this man better. However, Abu Lulu, steaming over this issue, plots or hatches a plan in order to assassinate Umar Radion. And as Umar Radion comes in the masjid and he starts to lead the Fajr Salat in the morning, he stabs him with a poison dagger. Several other men were also killed in, in, in the process of trying to capture him and they eventually captured him and killed him. And Umar Radion, he asks, he says, who was the man who did this? So they told him who it was, so he says, Alhamdulillah, I was not killed by the, at the hands of a believer, or the hands of a Muslim. But one important point to understand here, you know, the point for which Umar Radun gave his life, was that when you're telling somebody the rights, you tell their rights that, are, that they owe the other people. Everybody knows their rights. Oh, you know, my rights are being violated. And at the same time, we're violating everybody else's rights. So Omar Radha here, he says, to Abu Lulu, he told him the rights of the master, and to the master, he told him the rights of the captive. You know, like these days, you know, so many divorces, because the women want their rights and the, and the men want their rights. And nobody wants to give anybody else their rights. So when Omar Radio is martyred, now that door that was holding back all of the fitna is now broken. And so we start seeing this fitna trickle in. And of course, the next Khalifa is Uthman, Radiallahu And Banu Umayyah sees the opportunity because of the softness of Uthman. You know, Uthman and are very soft-hearted. So they seize this opportunity to take advantage of the situation place themselves in special positions and cause problems. However, when we look at Uthman, he is among the awwalun. He is among those who are the first to accept their Islam. He is the one whom Rasulullah initially married his daughter Bibi Ruqayya to. You know, Uthman Radio is a broad bounded man, but very handsome man. The daughter of Rasulullah, of course, all of them very beautiful. Bibi Rupaya passed away on the day of Badr. Uthman Radio wanted to join Rasulullah on this campaign, but Rasulullah told him, no, you stay here and you keep take care of my daughter. 
And even though he was not physically present in the field of Badr, Rasulullah included him in the, in, the, in the share of the spoils of war of Badr. And he is also counted among the companions of Badr because of this. Even though, again, he's not physically there, but the reality is he is there because Rasulullah counted him as being there. When she passes, because the, when Rasulullah was returning from Badr, Uthman Radun is returning from burying his wife and the daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Rasulullah marries his other daughter, Bibi Umm Kulthum, to Uthman. And when she passes away, Rasulullah said that if I had a hundred daughters, I would get them married to Uthman one by one. And because of these two, his title becomes the Nuren, the owner of two lights, which is also an interesting point for those who deny the Nur of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uthman Radion becomes the owner of two lights by marrying two of the daughters of Rasulullah Sallallahu So Rasulullah Sallallahu himself is not Nur. People's thought processes have become reversed. Get a little education and now we think we know everything and in fact we've become more ignorant. He also immigrated, Uthman Radhi is among those who immigrated twice for Islam. Once to Abyssinia and then to Medina Munawwara. And he, and he immigrated with his family, so with his, the daughter of Rasulullah. <laughs> when they arrive in Medina Munawwara, Water, of course, in Arabia is a hard commodity. Especially good water. You know, what you consider, what's considered sweet water. You know, you have the hard water with that, which has all these minerals and iron and stuff, and that's hard on your system, causes other problems. You know, even today, if you live in a place where you get hard water, you know, your pots and your pans, when you wash them, they become stained, the whole bathroom becomes stained from the shower and all of this, you know that this is hard water. It's bad for your system as well. Kidney stones, other health issues come up. So there was very low quantity and, and rare to find sweet water. There's a well on the outskirts of Medina Munawara which still exists today and still water comes from it today, called Bira Ruma. It was owned by a Jewish man who would charge the Muslims exorbitant amounts of money to take water from it. So Rasulullah he says that who will buy this for the believers? Many people went to the man and offered him money and he refused. Uthman Radhi also went, and Rasulullah said that whoever buys this, I guarantee for him paradise. So Uthman Radhi goes and he offers him an exorbitant amount of money, and the man refuses again. So then he offers him to buy half of it. He says, I'll buy half the well, and that way I'm allowed access to it one day, and the next day you have access to it. So we alternate days. And this man, he thinks, you know, Uthman, very good businessman, so being associated with him in business will be even a better thing for him. So he says, fine, I'll sell half of it to you. So what happens now? The believers come, they get two days of water, for free. So they take enough water for that day and the next day. 
And now no one buys any water from the Jewish man. So now Uthman Rada goes back to him and offers him to buy the other half. Even there he pays him a handsome amount, 20,000 dirham. I mean, he could have negotiated it down, but he still paid him a lot. So this is one time that Uthman he bought Jannah from Rasulullah Sussum twice. This is once. The second time was at the time of Tabuk. So in, you know, Tabuk was one of the two times that Rasulullah Sussum told the believers where they were going and why they were going there. All the other expeditions he kept secret until they got to a certain point. It was hot, it was the middle of the summer, the fruits were just ripening on the date trees. Heraclius had the intention of bringing an army of 100,000 men against the believers. <coughs> Rasulullah <laughs> says we will meet him on his own turf. And he tells the believers to get ready, start making preparations. And everybody starts making preparations, but you know their conditions are not very good for most of them. So how much will they bring? This is when Abu Bakr Radion brought a hundred percent. Umar Radion brought fifty percent. But the hundred percent of Abu Bakr Radion was what you could carry in your arms. So Rasulullah also makes the announcement in the masjid that who will help? in this hour of need. Give whatever you can. And Uthman, he says, Ya Rasulullah so he stands up, he says, Ya Rasulullah so I pledge 100 camels. Not just camels, but loaded with all goods. The Rasulullah so says it's accepted. Now he looks and he says, who else can give? And again, Uthman stands, he says, Ya Rasulullah Sussam, I pledge another 100 camels with all of their stuff, all the belongings, all the, all the, everything that they can carry. And again, you know, the face of Rasulullah Sussam lights up. This is what Uthman wants to see. This is why he's, he's giving this. He wants to see that beautiful smile. Again, Rasulullah looks at everybody and says, who else can give? And Uthman stands up again, another 100 camels. And so now Rasulullah tells him, he says, go and bring them. And after he leaves, he tells the companions, if I had asked more, he would have given more, but he would have given until he had nothing left. But even now, when Uthman returns, he brings 1,000 dinar, gold coins. Again, this is a time when you can buy a cow for three, three dirham, and there are 15 dirham in a dinar. So one dinar is equal to buying five cows. He brings 1,000 of them, and he places them, and Rasulullah Sussam lays out his, his shirt, and he places them in the shirt. And then Rasulullah shows this to the people. Look at what my Uthman has done. And then he makes the statement that it does not matter what he does after this. Nothing, nothing can ruin what he has done. For those who have issues, oh, he should have done this or he should have done that. Who are you when Rasulullah has said that nothing, he, nothing that he does after this point can ruin anything of his? So this is where he buys Jannah twice from Rasulullah Of course, after the martyrdom of Umar. Uthman becomes the Khalifa. And as I said, Banu Umayyah now takes advantage of the situation. For the, six, for, for the first six years, everything is moving smooth. You know, it takes time for the enemies to set up. Now, this, the last six years, you have the turmoil coming. 
the fitna is developing. Until you get to a situation where in the season of Hajj, when most of the companions have gone for the Hajj, groups from Iraq, from Egypt, and from Yemen converge on Medina Munawwara, demanding that Uthman rather be removed from his position. And for him, it would have been easy to give it up. And these are not people who cared for position. But Rasulullah had also told him that you will be given the shirt, and when you are given the shirt, do not take it off. Meaning when you are given, when you are appointed as Khalifa, then you are not to give it up. And you have situation where now they have boycotted, they surrounded his house. No food is allowed in. No water is allowed in. I'm going to skip the details and get to the meat of the, of the matter. <laughs> Ali Radha and various other companions, including Zubair bin Awam Radha, they placed their sons at the door of the house of Uthman to safeguard is him. So Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein السلام, are standing guard at the door. Again, these groups are demanding that Uthman be removed from his position. And nothing, anyone who tries to get anything in is assaulted and beaten. Everybody is telling Uthman, Radhan, tell your army to wipe them out. He has this massive army. He has the largest navy of the time. And he says, I will not. Because he also understood that there were innocent people who had gotten caught up in this turmoil. And if he wiped them out, they would also be killed. And he also understood that Rasulullah said that soon the swords will come out between two groups of believers and will not go back into their sheaths until the day of judgment. And he did not want to be responsible for that. He did not want to be the first one to draw that sword. His servants the companions of Rasulullah so are asking him, saying, you know, give us permission, we will wipe them out. And he says, no. And so on the 18th of Dhil Hajj, a band of these rebels climb the roof, get on the roof and jump into the house. And Uthman Radion is sitting reading the Quran. He has not eaten, eaten anything for three days and nor drank anything for three days. The one who provided for the believers when they were thirsty now has nothing. The one who gave them water and who gave them food when they needed it is under complete boycott. And when this, group, when this group comes, the first among them is a companion of Rasulullah Muhammad bin Abu Bakr, radiallahu the son of Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. The fitna, you know, the deception was so strong that even he had gotten caught up in this. And so he brings his sword and he's about to attack Uthman and Uthman radiallahu looks up at him. As he's reading the Quran, he looks up at him. He doesn't say that, oh, for the sake of Allah, don't do this, because he's doing this for the sake of Allah. In his mind, he's doing what he's doing for the sake of Allah. He says to him, he says, oh, the son of my brother, 
if your father had seen you now, what would he say? And these words hit him like such a shock that he throws his sword down and he runs off and he says that I am free from the murder of Uthman. I have no part in this. The others who had no faith, they come and they massacre him. Jump on his chest and as his wife is trying to stop them from killing him, her fingers are also cut. But they're not satisfied with this. They have assassinated him. And now they won't even allow him to be buried. Until finally, Ali Radun has to intervene and force the issue. Three days later, he's buried. And, they won't, and when they get to the graveyard, they won't allow him to be buried in, in the Muslim graveyard. Jannat al baqi at that time still had two parts. One side was for the Muslims and one side was for the Jews who had, who had died there before Rasulullah Sussman had come. And there was a wall that separated the two areas. And eventually, you know, on that third day, he's buried, but he's buried in the Jewish section of Jannat al baqi there are only 17 people in his Salat al Janaza. Again, you know, this is Uthman, for whom Rasulullah guaranteed Jannah. Not just once or twice, at least three times. In reality, even more than that. He is Ashara Mubashara, you know, the ten given the glad tidings. Again, Rasulullah said, Uthman has bought Jannah from me twice. Bir Ruma and Tabuk. So under these conditions, then eventually, you know, when Ali Radu eventually accepts the Khilafah, you know, because it was offered to him and he refused initially. He said, choose amongst yourself and I will support whoever you choose. They came back to him, he said, there's no one else except you. He said, I agree under the condition that all of the of the Sahaba of Badr, all the Badri Sahabi, they acknowledge and give bayah to me. If they do that, then I will accept the Khilafah. And they agreed to do this. But again, coming back to Uthman, Radiallahu Now, And when we look at these conditions, you know, the fitna then. And today we're living in the fitna of the judge. So much confusion. But the confusion comes from ourselves. The confusion then existed as a lesson for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed these things to happen so that later generations would learn from them. The problem is we don't even know them, much less learn from them. The one who led Salatul Janazah for, for Uthman Radhan was a hypocrite, Marwan bin Hakam. But Uthman Radun didn't need the Salatul Janazah when Rasulullah had already given him the guarantee. Marwan bin Hakam, he was the cousin and the son-in-law of Uthman first cousin. His father tried to change some of the verses of the Quran. And when Rasulullah called him on it, They, of course, tried to give his explanation, so then Rasulullah exiled him with his son, Marwan.
But again, you know, because there are people who criticize the actions of Uthman. When Rasulullah Sallam has said, after Tabuk, when he donated and he gave so much, he said that nothing after this point can ruin anything of Uthman. Then who are we? We acknowledge what happened. There's a difference in criticizing and acknowledging what happened. You know, we acknowledge how Banu Umayya manipulated the situation because of the soft-heartedness of Uthman. But we need to be careful with our tongues when it comes to the ones Rasulullah loves. And this applies even more to his daughter, <coughs> Bibi Sfatina, salamu alayhi wa sallam. So may Allah, time's up. I've actually gone over. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us uh, and, uh, you know, give us the true love and the true adab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may he make that, that love the means for our entrance into paradise because in reality that's the only means of entrance into paradise uh, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that and uh, you know and guide us and those who have not made sunnah go and make sunnah inshallah